Today we are building not one, not two, but three planters. And all of these planters are super easy to build, very straightforward, I have the plans for you. And they should probably take you about half an hour to an hour to put together. But if you are new here, I am Annika and I am here to demystify DIY and inspire and empower you to build all of the things. And I have a whole bunch of resources linked in the description below. So be sure to take a look at that. It also includes the Power Tools Simplified Guide, which will help you get started and show you all the little tips and tricks for the power tools. Now let's start building. Now the main part of all of the planters, which is the box of the planter, which is where all the plants are going to go, is made up of cedar fence pickets. And these fence pickets you can get in any home improvement store. However, one of the problems with these fence pickets is that they are extremely, extremely rough. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of sanding to make the boxes look good but before we start sanding i like to cut them down into the pieces that i need so i'm only sanding the parts that i really really need as always i have the full cut list and the detailed step-by-step -step plans available for you for all three planters that we are building today so take a look at the description below to get a link to those plans Right now, I'm only going to be building the boxes for the planters. Once they're built, I can check the dimensions and then build the stands. Now it's time to sand down these boards. I started by sanding them with 60 grit because they are super duper rough. And then I stepped through 80 grit, 120 grit and 150 grit. I have a detailed tutorial on all things sanding and how to get the best finish possible. And I will link to that in the description below. And as you can see, at the end of it, it looks really, really gorgeous. However, since I have a planer, I decided to send the boards through the planer a couple of times so that I got rid of most of that excessive roughness and then I only had to sand the boards with 120 grit. Now let's assemble these boxes. I am using finished nails to assemble these boxes and of course wood glue. You want to make sure you use outdoor wood glue especially if the planter box is going to be outdoors. The bottom has two boards, so I attached one bottom board to one of the side boards using wood glue and finished nails. And I repeated that to make another version of that. And now we're going to add wood glue between these two pieces and put them together. Now at this point, I probably should have used clamps, but I just kind of pushed them together and held them in place as I added the other two side boards and I attached them all around, making sure everything held together. And that is the bottom of our planter box. Now I need to add one more layer of boards all around and to do this we need to add some supports on the inside. So I am attaching two by two boards on the inside using wood glue and finished nails through the boards on the sides. And now I can just go ahead and attach the rest of the boards on the top and finish up the planter box. And I built two of them because two of our planters use the same kind of box. Now the box for the third planter is super duper easy to build. You just attach the side pieces to the bottom piece using wood glue and finish nails. And then we add in the long side pieces with wood glue and finish nails again. And that is the simplest and easiest planter box. At this point, I gave all of the boxes one final round of sanding, especially the edges of the planter boxes. They can be really, really rough. So this is a good time to give them a nice finish. Now it's time to build the stands for the planter boxes. Two of those stands are built out of two by two boards and two by two boards can get really expensive. So I like to rip down my own two by twos from two by four boards. And then I just cut them down to size on my miter saw. The smallest plan stand is actually going to have angles to it. So I set my miter saw to 15 degrees and made all of those cuts. 
With all the 2x2s cut down, it was time to go on another sanding spree. Now it's time to put together the planter box stands and to do this we are using pocket holes. I am using the Craig 720 but you can use any other pocket hole jig. I have a ton of resources on building with pocket holes including the only detailed step-by-step -step video course of its kind so be sure to take a look at the description for all of the details. First up, we are making pocket holes in all of the three quarter inch material. So in the one by eight boards for plant stand number one, as well as the bottom support rails that are made up of one by twos for the other two planters. Next, we need to make pocket holes in two by two boards. So I set up my pocket hole jig for that and made all the pocket holes. So here are the boards with pocket holes for planter number two. And now it's time to make pocket holes for the third planter, which has the angled cuts. So you have to be very careful as you are making those pocket holes. You wanna make sure that the entire board covers the holes in the jig so the screws don't come out of the top of the boards as you are joining them. And those are the pocket holes we need for planter number three. All right, we are going to start assembling our planter number one, which is built out of one by 10 boards. So the first step is to attach the bottommost shelf to one of the sides using wood glue and pocket hole screws. You wanna make sure that they are well aligned and of course clamps are always our best friends. So I am going to attach it all using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Now once this is attached, we need to attach the middle board which is going to be supporting the planter box. So to make sure I get the exact location for the planter box, I just used that to make all the measurements and markings. And to make sure that the board stayed straight, I clamped a straight edge in place and used that to support the board as I attached it with pocket hole screws and wood glue. And now I'm just going to turn it all over onto the other side, align, clamp it, and attach using pocket hole screws. And our planter number one is all done. The planter box fits in nice and snug inside of the stand, and now we can go on to planter number two. Now the stand for planter number two is pretty much built with two by twos with just a couple of one by twos that are going to be hidden underneath and are actually going to support our planter box. I started by building the front and the back of the plant stand, which is basically just two by twos that are attached together using wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws. Now I am putting the pocket holes on the side, which will actually face the planter box. So the planter box will hide all of these pocket hole screws. The planter box is actually supported on the one by two rails. So I measured and marked exactly where they were going to go and I attached them. These are three quarter inch thick boards. So we want to use an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. And then I went ahead and attached the bottom two by two using two and a half inch pocket hole screws on both ends and then just turned the entire thing over to attach to the other side. Once again, remember that the different thickness boards are going to use the different pocket hole screws. The three quarter inch board is going to use an inch and a quarter pocket hole screw and the two by twos or the one and a half inch thick boards are going to use the two and a half inch pocket hole screw. And that is planter number two. Now let's build the stand for planter number three, which is the angled cuts. Now you do notice that I did make some extra pocket holes because I made some test runs and the pocket holes I had originally made were too close to the surface and the pocket holes crew was coming out of the top. So I moved the pocket holes more inwards. Building this is pretty straightforward. You just wanna attach the aprons to the legs and the best way to do this is to clamp everything down so everything's stays aligned as you add those pocket hole screws in. 
Of course, we need to build two of these. And next up, we need to attach the rails that are going to support the planter. So I marked exactly where they were going to be from the top of the leg frame and attached one by two boards at that location. Now this can throw you off a little bit because everything's at an angle, but these boards are straight. So they will come out on the sides just a little bit, but you don't really notice it very much. And now we just attach everything together with more pocket hole screws and wood glue. Now things can get a little bit tight in here. So a right angle adapter for the drill is a lifesaver in this situation. And that is our stand for planter box number three. Now it's time to stain these planter boxes. I am actually using deck stain to stain as well as seal these boxes. And I absolutely love this brown color. I will add a link to the one that I am using in the description below. All right, so here are the painted stands. Now there was a problem with my camera and it did not record me painting, but basically it's just black paint, gray primer and black paint and we have the stands. And now you can simply go ahead and add in the planters. Now these are pretty snug in here, but if you wanted to make it permanent and more sturdy, you can totally add in some screws into the rails from inside of the planter and that will make it nice and strong and permanent and sturdy. My plan is to just use these as decorative boxes and add in the plants in their own pots. But if you wanted to directly plant into these boxes, be sure to drill some drainage holes and also attach some landscape fabric inside. If you want to build any of these planters, I have detailed step-by-step -step plans and diagrams and all of that is linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.